Hi, welcome to another day in the life of a commercial gas engineer. This is a plant room that I refuse to go into. I do have a can-do attitude and I do think that engineers should have a can-do attitude. So not stopping at any obstacle in order to not do a job. But when you see rats like this in a place, I think it's good to not go in. So I sent this one back. What do you look for when you're looking at the readings? Well, when I'm personally carrying out my testing, I want my CO2 to be close to what you can see here, 9.5. That's pretty good. I also want my oxygen to be around about that mark, at about 4%. That's also good. And my CO is low. It's 29. And my excess air is 24.7 which is a little bit on the low side, but that's kind of okay. It's not too low. 10, 10, 15%, I'd be a bit concerned and look further into it. But it was a warm day. And you can see the plant room temperature there was 31.6, a little bit on the high side. And in this plant room, there was mechanical ventilation, supply and extract. And there was also some natural ventilation. Okay, this picture isn't that good in the mechanical ventilation that the supply is operating and you can use an anometer as well to check your speed i was checking the decibels of a screeching fan because a resident was complaining that it was making too much noise so it was about 79 decibels according to the sound app on my phone the maximum was 87 that was recorded. All right, I carried out a gas ray on the meter. So you can see that I put a decimal point in here. And then what you have here is the readings of the boiler in high file, the gas rate, using the Anton Sprint app to calculate it. A good thing with this is that you can also use this to calculate to see if your gas meter is undersized. The meter at hand is a U100 and you can see here that we have two boilers and if the other boiler when gas rated is also requiring 42.6 meters cubed an hour of gas then combined you've got about 85 meters cubed an hour and it's a U100 which allows 100 cubic meters of gas an hour to pass through so the meter is of the right size. Let me know how you work out the same calculation on the back of the boiler it's got written down 502 kilowatts but i couldn't find any data badge on the actual boiler itself okay and just a quick thing that i would like to show you because there's been a query on one of my videos a tightness testing where one or two engineers believe that the meter volume is this number that you have here so as you can see you see the v there if you want to know the volume of the meter always look if you want to find out what meter is you look where the barcode is and the serial number should i say and then you can see here that this is a u40 and also look at the q max the quantity max that it lets through per hour let's let's download this image so in this picture can you see the q max q max is helping me identify what meter it is okay it's a u40 meter it's letting through 40 meters cubed an hour of gas also, do you see the serial number at the bottom? It says M040. That's also helping me identify meter is. And then you look in your book and then that will show you your volume. Here we are. There's the service sheet, meter volumes. And then you just look at what type of meter it is. Like the U40, for example. And that gets you to how, how much. So remember, these are this is how much volume of gas it is letting through. It's Q max. And then this is giving you the volume. Okay, I hope that's clear. Another thing, I hope this is not turning into a lesson, but it's something that I practice and what you should also, do not hesitate to issue your gas awning notices. When you go to a site and something is at risk, do not hesitate to do so. If you're unable to commission a boiler, either put an uncommissioned certificate on it or if you don't have those, put a warning notice on it that the boiler could be at risk because you are unable to carry out servicing because it requires a repair. It brings attention to it and it's more likely the client will pay for it to be fixed because a notice has been issued on it. It flags up more attention and also write out your warning notice 
make sure that they get it. Do a digital notice and then do also a written notice for everybody to see. Make it quite clear what is written on there. Don't write in jargon. Make it very clear what you're putting on the paper, what the problem is, how the problem can be rectified. Do not overcomplicate it. Then also sometimes get advice from another engineer. See what another engineer believes ask in their opinion what do you think about this do you think this is at risk do you think this is id refer to your gas manual um, notes but when you're coming across the same at risk or id situations you don't have to sometimes contact somebody because you already know what that category is you should sometimes let management know especially when it's an id when you're going to shut a boiler down let management know that and the client know that you're about to shut a boiler off because of such and such a situation have your caps ready to cap it if you're id in it if it's at risk and you just need to make sure that you put your warning notice on it, that you isolate, get pictures of it, isolate, take pictures, take pictures, take pictures. Keep your own records that you have isolated something in case someone goes behind you to turn it back on and make it difficult for the appliance to just be to be turned on. Do not make it be something that's easy for someone to just go and switch a switch on. Make it quite difficult. Even when it's at risk, make it quite difficult for the maintenance man or forever to go back in and turn it on. So a tool should be required to get that appliance back on. Leave a note on the boiler as to what is wrong with it so put a note on it to say boiler requires parts or boiler requires new fan don't just leave the boiler off put a note on to as to what's wrong with it okay i'm just trying to show you here t6 to t7 so this is me linking a plug on a burner t6 to t7 for low fire i've been having many questions of people asking me how does this work i've made videos on it you can do it via the control as well so here's me plugging it in with the link in here's the link in it can you see so i've got my link on my t6 to t7 in low fire so that's going to force it into low fire for me and then you can tell on here do you see this is low fire this is the boiler in high fire okay thank you for joining me please leave comments in the section below as to what makes you turn away from a site whether it be asbestos warnings or if it's rats running around a plant room or a flooded plant what makes you run away from a plant room let me know please leave comments in the section below until next time bye bye bye